Don't be just a data scientist. Aim better and get paid for it. In the last video, I talked about basic skills that you need to become a data scientist. But is that enough? There are so many people who, according to me, incorrectly call themselves or have a designation of a data scientist. In this video, I'll give you some ideas of how you can truly differentiate yourself and become unique in your role and possibly get paid more. But before I answer that question, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon to be notified of videos in architecture and AI that I publish every other week. Last time, I shared four foundational parts to get you on the way to become a data scientist. You can spend your whole life in this fourth stage if you like. Then you're likely to be solving generic problems across different domains. In some sense, you are a data science generalist. Different people are at different levels of maturity across these four stages. But the question is, can you progress even further and differentiate yourself? After all, the more you differentiate yourself, the more unique you are. So let's explore some possibilities continuing from part one. Fifth, you have to learn about using and modifying specific algorithms in the AI space. Algorithms that are much more powerful. One such class of algorithms is deep learning, which falls under the broad category of connectionistic AI. Here, the algorithms use connections between nodes for inferencing. For example, if you show the system a picture of a truck, it will use the individual pixels on the image to do the recognition, slowly building up higher and higher level shapes internally. Another class is the symbolic representation and learning, which falls under the broad category of symbolic AI. Here, the algorithms formulate human understandable symbolic representations for inferencing. For example, when a system is shown the same truck or an image of the same truck, it doesn't look at the individual pixels, but tries to formulate an image that contains symbols instead and higher level shapes, just like humans would interpret shapes in their own mind. Humans use symbols to model and navigate the world. Today, connectionistic AI is in vogue, but the bleeding edge of research is about looking to combine these two broad categories for even better AI. Maybe sometime later, I'll dive into the differences between these two categories in detail. Essentially in this stage, if you choose to study and understand deep learning, then you can use it to solve different kinds of business problems. An open source framework called TensorFlow supports deep learning and you'll essentially want to become an expert in using that or a similar framework. But what would be your next step? Is there even more? Six, you'll use your expertise in either connectionistic AI or symbolic AI to address specific problems in specific domains. I'll just give you two examples to show what I'm talking about. Take NLP or natural language processing. In this field, you'll be using algorithms to recognize, understand, and interpret natural language. The languages could be of any one of the more than 7,000 languages in the world. Hindi, Tamar, English, Spanish, Mandarin, Russian, and so on. Most NLP techniques use vector representations. And the latest in the field is called BERT, which adds a bi-directional perspective to the analysis. BERT stands for Bi-Directional Encoder Representations from Transformation. That's an odd name, but that's okay. There are many variations of BERT that people have implemented to adapt the algorithm to specific situations. For example, you have Albert, Clinical BERT, Video BERT, GBERT, and so on. On the other hand, take computer vision. In this field, you'll be using algorithms to recognize objects in images or videos, understand movement, and provide a summary of the scenes or 
recommend actions to take. You may build a computer vision system to recognize tumors in MRI images, or you may build a surveillance system to track intruders into a secure area while allowing known people to enter. Today, much of computer vision is done through one kind of deep learning network called the CNN or the Convolution Neural Network. Again, you can get deep into the implementation and fine tune this kind of network and become a really good deep expert in computer vision. Since there are many types of computer vision problems to solve, which requires different kinds of approaches or a modification of the CNN, like fine tuning the hyperparameters or adjusting the number of layers in the network among others. Remember at level four, we talked about the discipline of linear algebra and statistics. Well, this is probably a level where you should definitely get more familiar with them. If you want to experiment with activation functions, define your own parameter space, try to minimize the error function using variations on the gradient descent algorithm and so on, you should understand these concepts better. Seven, you might even further differentiate yourself by focusing on particular verticals that you're interested in or have experience in. For example, in the healthcare space, there are many types of computer vision problems to solve and you can market yourself as having knowledge about that domain. The same would be true for insurance and financial domains. Since you bring domain expertise to the table, you are valued more by the business. If you have domain knowledge, then you can position yourself at a competitive advantage. Here, for example, you might use computer vision in the insurance space to automatically detect hail damage using drones to capture images. In Banking, computer vision can be used for customer authentication using retinal scans, automatic check scanning, or even document analysis for forgery. You could be a computer vision expert analyzing satellite images. Maybe you're looking for patterns of change over time or identifying global changes in weather, or you can use satellite imagery to identify large swaths where illegal poaching is uh, happening. Eight, you may even take the algorithms that you have developed specifically for a domain and use that knowledge to create new algorithms that do not exist today. That gets you into the research domain, but I just call this out as the next level of speciality where you may wish to go. Some people do a doctorate in AI during the course of which they perform the research. For example, in my doctoral work, I came up with a new approach to identifying certain class of objects and images, which was the basis of my thesis. Today, another hot area of research is around how to combine the power of the different categories of AI systems that I talked about, connectionistic and symbolic for even greater cognition capabilities. This is also the level at which deep familiarity with linear algebra, statistics, probability, calculus, software engineering, distributed systems, and such can be very useful. I just wanna mention that this is a possibility. And when you hear that some PhDs in AI are getting paid over a million dollars, it's most likely that this is the research and new algorithm development skills that they bring to the table. After all, some people worked on deep neural networks and invented a new algorithm or modified the backpropagation algorithm in a significant way to train it for a broader class of solutions. In other words, you might invent totally new ways of doing something in the AI domain, but don't do a PhD for the money because by the time you graduate, the world might have changed. Secondly, there are other options to have a great career in AI. Architectural skills are gonna be important as well because you wanna be able to look at the big picture. Architecture skills will help you design larger systems which are much needed for the future. Check out my video on what is enterprise architecture. In this context, of course, I made a lot of assumptions and ignored many of the roles that you could take on for a company to become AI driven. 
You could refer to my other video on roles in data science for a better picture that includes data analysts, machine learning engineers, and so on. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. Also, you can download a free one-page visual summary of this video by signing up for my mailing list. For those already on my mailing list, you should have a one-pager in your mailbox. Thank you deeply for spending some virtual time with me and giving me the motivation to do what I do.